So today, before I leave the stage to much smarter folks than I am, I wanted to give you all an update on our community uh, and more broadly the state of open source in financial services. And spoiler alert, uh, the state of our community is as strong as it's ever been. Um, we've seen a record amount of contributions this year, uh, and I'm glad to report that the vast majority of these contributions are coming from financial institutions something completely unheard of even a little over two years ago when we started PINAS. Um, this is an important milestone for us, but before we look ahead at the opportunities that we think uh, this opens up for the industry, uh, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. In fact, when we started Finos two years ago, or even further when we started the Symphony Software Foundation four years ago, um, as I pitched the idea of open source collaboration in the industry, a highly siloed and regulated industry, let's just say that the reaction was, you know, less than lukewarm. Um, you know, and that's understandable. It's an industry that not only has to abide to strict regulations, but that it culturally can be very competitive, uh, not just across firms, but also within firms. Not only there were several myths, that, uh, uh, you know, about open source that needed to be debunked, uh, but there were concrete legal, uh, technical, and strategic reasons to prevent even internal collaboration models like, for example, inner source, let alone open source collaboration across firms. So that's when we started our open source readiness initiative, which paired, uh, you know, if you pair that with the changing nature of this industry and the forces uh, that we'll touch upon a little later, that has delivered major progress in how financial services can now collaborate through open source. And since we started, we've seen an amazing progression. I mean, just take a look. Um, when we started in 2016, we were focused on collaborating on a single platform, Symphony. Uh, the platform was originally born out of an investment uh, out of the largest financial institutions, pretty much all the bulge bracket banks uh, out there. Uh, and based on a contribution from Goldman Sachs, uh, their internal collaboration platform called Live Current. Uh, and the idea behind that was that an open source foundation could be the neutral place to build an ecosystem on Symfony, and the inherent transparency of open source would increase adoption and acceptance by other financial institutions, fintechs, and regulators. So you see, even four years ago, uh, there was a spark of this idea of open source collaboration. But then it was 2017 when our Platinum member Deutsche Bank contributed Plexus, uh, a battle-tested messaging bus used uh, in their Autobahn single dealer platform, that effectively, that was the spark that made us realize that maybe, uh, you know, just maybe, we could leverage the trust and the network that we had built in our community to collaborate not just on Symfony, uh, but to leverage open source uh, to address really long-standing technology challenges and collaboration challenges across the industry. Uh, you know, and that's when we uh, hosted our inaugural OSSF. And there we heard loud and clear the message from the industry. Over 400 uh, folks validating this idea and pushing us to, you know, expand our remit. And so that's when we launched Finos. In 2018, the Symphony Software Foundation became Finos. We added amazing representation from other financial institutions, from technology firms. And we also started seeing, you know, quickly uh, the power of this collaboration model uh, in, for example, standards like FDC3, our uh, interoperability standard, moving quickly to deliver releases. This was a really early sign that we were, you know, on the right track. But then 2019 was really pivotal for us. Um, we received what, you know, to date uh, is still our most stirred project on GitHub, um, you know, perspective. This was a real-time visualization library contributed by JP Morgan. Uh, and we continue to bring, you know, the industry along with our open source readiness program. And we culminated the year with the largest OSSF to date last year. Um, you know, 
everyone I spoke with uh, felt a unique energy last year of a community being born. Uh, very much looking forward to what we could do together. Well, and then 2020 stroke. Um, you know, the silver lining is uh, this has actually massively accelerated. Uh, you know, if you think uh, uh, how much now firms are comfortable uh, with remote and distributed teams, very much, you know, the open source default mode of operation, uh, this has really resulted in uh, strong membership growth. Our project portfolio has grown uh, uh, drastically this year in 2020 with contributions from, you know, Goldman Sachs, Citi, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Nomura, pretty much all of our uh, uh, platinum members and financial institutions are now actively engaged in contributions. And let's not forget, we joined the Linux Foundation. This has been an amazing year for us as we partner with the bigger family, the larger family of the Linux Foundation, which is also, by the way, helping us produce this event today. This has been an amazing partnership and we look forward to what this can bring to the industry and beyond over the next years. Before we talk about our projects and you know, the major progress we've done there this year, I want to send a shout out to our members. Um, you know, today we are 38 members strong and you know, all of this wouldn't have been possible without you. Uh, without your support, without your funding, without the sweat equity you put every single day to grow this community. And so every time I look at this slide, I am incredibly proud of having such a corporate representation spanning from you know, financial institutions to fintechs, uh, from technology companies to other consortium nonprofits we're now partnered with. Uh, a representation that keeps growing in diversity uh, as we look to engage very much every constituent of this ecosystem. On this note, I am very proud to announce today the addition of three new corporate members to our family. Today, we're welcoming Suze and Intel as gold members. Um, I'm very excited to have such open source leaders joining our foundation and very much look forward to working with them. We're also announcing DiffBlue is joining us as a silver member out of the UK, once again, showing the true global nature of our community. And finally, please join in welcoming uh, uh, these corporate members to our community. Make sure you connect them today, today through the different collaboration channels that we have available at these companies. But that's not all. Today, Finos is also announcing the creation of, free, of the free of charge uh, associate membership program. Uh, it's targeted for nonprofits, industry consortia, governmental and academic institutions, and we're actually welcoming our inaugural three associate members to Finos. I'm very proud to announce that AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation, is partnering us to involve regulators in our open source endeavors. Um, and uh, uh, you're going to hear about it much more tomorrow, um, you know, from our COO, Tasha Ellison, and, and the AIR team. Uh, we're also welcoming today the Interwork Alliance to our community, um, excuse me, Interwork Alliance, to ensure that our standardization efforts can span across the world uh, of decentralized technologies. Uh, finally, last but not least, we also formalized our associate membership with ISDA, the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, with whom we already partnered throughout 2020 uh, on the legend pilots, uh, formerly known as Alloy, uh, to make changes to their common domain model and successfully hosted uh, collaboration on this powerful modeling platform. So what's the common thread here? Um, Finas and the experience we built is now recognized as an enabler for other institutions, for other nonprofits and consortia in the industry that are maybe less familiar with open source. And we think we can help accelerate their progress. You know, we're here to help, to consolidate, not to fragment. Now, I just mentioned legend. Um, and so if you haven't followed the news lately, let me give you a quick reminder. Uh, and again, spoiler alert, 
this was a huge deal for us at Finas, for our community, and for the industry at large. Um, if you were here last year, you remember that Goldman Sachs announced the intent to open source their Alloy modeling platform uh, and the underpinning language called Pure. Uh, so I'm really happy to report that this process of open sourcing completed in October uh, with the contribution of the platform, which is now referred to as Legend. Um, this is a huge step for Goldman, for our community, for the industry at large. Not only we expect you know, other financial institutions to start adopting the platform that Goldman uses for all sort of modeling, from regulatory to pricing, um, but we have seen a great potential in Finos actually hosting a legend instance, which has been already by, used by over a hundred uh, modelers to collaborate uh, on common pan-industry um, standardization efforts. So check it out, download it, contribute to it, and if you'd like to try it, uh, uh, we are hosting our legend sandbox, so go to finos.org slash legend and we can get you set up. But it's not just about legends. Um, you know, as I mentioned, over the last two years, our project portfolio has grown to include so many high value and high quality projects for this industry. After all, financial institutions, you know, should be no surprise, financial institutions have massive technology organizations and amazing software components that when contributed can deliver immediate value to the industry. So we talked about legend from Goldman Sachs. We touched on the perspective visualization library originally contributed by JP Morgan. But while I won't be able to discuss here uh, the over 40 projects in our landscape, there's a couple of projects I wanted to highlight to showcase the depth and the breadth of our community. Wolf, for example, uh, was contributed this year by Deutsche Bank. It's a very mature active project uh, that allows you to visualize and define your organization technology landscape. Um, when you think about the sheer size of these financial institutions, well, you can easily see how this project has a massive potential to be used across the industry. Um, I also wanted to send out a shout out to the Morpher team, uh, a project that was contributed earlier this year by Morgan Stanley. Um, this project aims to represent your domain model and your business logic in a technology agnostic fashion. And we can see great potential here for standardizing some of the common challenges required across the industry. For example, an area where we're seeing very high potential is the regulatory angle, uh, where Morphe could be used to define common regulatory implementations. And last but not least, uh, just a shout out uh, we quickly talked about our FDC3 standard, which stands for Financial Desktop Collaboration and Connectivity Consortium. This is probably the most mature standard we have in Finos. Uh, uh, in case you don't know, yes, we do also open standards, not just open source projects. Um, this standard has reached its 1.1 version, it's very mature, and it's being increasingly implemented by both vendors and financial institutions developing applications internally to harmonize uh, the ecosystem of these applications, not only on the you know, front office, on the trader's desktop, but also in the mid office and back office. So it's a very powerful standard and we think it's gonna help bring together uh, you know, a previously largely disconnected ecosystem of applications. Um, and make sure, again, I couldn't cover all the 40 projects here, but make sure you check out the landscape uh, the over 40 projects in the Finos landscape at landscape.finos.org. Um, if you are engaged in other Linux Foundation projects, you probably are familiar with the landscape. Uh, so please check it out and we're hopefully gonna see you contributing to some of these projects. So given the growth that we had this year, it should be no surprise that in October 2020, uh, you know, October 2020 has marked the all time high a number of commits to the Finos community. Um, not only that, but in 2020, over 70% of our projects contributed came from financial institutions. I'll stop a second to let that one sink in. I mean, this is an industry that has historically struggled to collaborate and we think this is an amazing achievement. 
But as much as I'd love to credit the, the Finos community and our team for the relentless work done with our open source readiness initiative, and trust me, that has massively helped several of our members to get through the hump and start contributing. The truth is the industry is living a seismic shift and the context we're moving in in 2020 makes open source in this industry not only strategic, but almost a foregone conclusion. So let's have a look at some of these forces. Why is this industry now seemingly suddenly embracing open source contribution and collaboration? Well, first and foremost, the business context we are moving in has drastically changed over the last 10 years. Um, not only you know, the advent of electronic training uh, uh, and just generally very highly competitive market has driven spreads and margins to their historical lows, um, impacting the top line. Uh, but if you look at the bottom line, the regulatory spend has steadily increased over the last 10 years. So there simply is no longer a quasi infinite amount of money to be thrown at the problem. And if you pair that with the mandate uh, to become technology companies, and more generally to deliver customer-centric solution for the digitally native uh, new generation, well, then you can see that the business imperatives point to a much stronger need for efficiency and a tech-native approach. On the other side of the equation, the technology landscape has drastically evolved over the last 10 years. And presenting really new opportunities. Um, cloud, first and foremost, which by the way, itself, I believe it wouldn't exist without open source. And the advent of the centralized technologies, which are in a way threatening the very notion of these large centralized financial institutions. And if you add to that equation, the increased talent crunch the industry is experiencing for both older technologies like mainframe, and most importantly for new technologies, you realize why the industry is looking very seriously now to tap it into the ocean of talent that exists in open source communities. If you pair that, those business and technology drivers, with the tensions of an ecosystem, a landscape that is still largely divided between the up and coming fintechs on one hand, uh, who really target to deliver a drastically new user experience as their differentiator, and on the other hand, incumbent vendors still having a dominant position in the market uh, and continue to leverage in that. Um, again, if you pair that with the growing number of new generation technologies who are called in senior and executive positions in banks, coming with a strong open source experience, um, you know, grown in years of delivering technology, quote unquote, on the West Coast, uh, then you realize that really, open source is here to stay. But make no mistake, this is just the beginning. I wanna draw a parallel, uh, of course, as an Italian, to a love relationship. Uh, I think that where we are now is, you know, being happily married after years of dating, in a way through large consumption of open source, but limited contribution. And so what now? Well, like any marriage, now the goal is to nurture this relationship. It's not going to be easy. Each side will have to give something up, but the reward would be able to, would be to be able to collaborate uh, to create solutions for some of the long standing challenges in this industry. This is the imperative. This is just the beginning and it behooves on us as a community to leverage this amazing community that we've built and go after higher order challenges. So that brings me to, to the road ahead. Um, I think first of all, as I said, we have an opportunity to seize. And by far, I don't expect this to us to only make an impact in financial services. It's no longer a mirage to think that, you know, with this community that we have and the representation from the largest financial institutions in the world, we can make an impact beyond our business problems into areas like sustainability, financial inclusion, diversity, which continue to be massive problems. Um, in order to do that, we need to build a commercial ecosystem around the open source projects that we have. Uh, and we think there is a huge first mover advantage there for fintechs 
that are gonna jump in and repeat what we have seen happening in pretty much any other industry, uh, commercializing open source. Um, but in order to do that, we need to continue nurturing our projects in the open. Um, you know, as you all well know, it doesn't just take to throw code in GitHub to make a project successful. And so it is our imperative to work together with our contributors to make our projects wildly adopted and contributed to. And the way we're gonna do that is to really embrace all constituents in our community. We are a global and inclusive community. And as you hear a lot tomorrow, we are doing a lot of work to include the regulators, to include you know, the global uh, uh, financial institutions, all the other industry consortia, as you've heard today. So, so much work ahead, but we see a major opportunity here. And finally, I wanna close with this. Open source in financial services is a positive sum game. Let's be clear, nobody will have the time attention, the resources, or the goodwill to just do open source for the public good and see it through. But the good news is that there are massive opportunities, commercial opportunities for each individual constituent, whether you're a bank, a fintech, a big tech or cloud service provider, or even a regulator. Because as you go after those opportunities, the open source way enables all of us together to create faster innovation, better interoperability, data standardization, a truly open fintech ecosystem, and definitely mitigate the risk market-wide. I think these are all very worthy goals, we think. And so we do hope you'll enjoy the next two days. And after that, you'll join our community and contribute to our projects.